Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. We're having a special show today, Community Matters. We're talking about the uh, Ceramics of Hawaii show that just opened. For the first time, the Ceramics of Hawaii has had a juried show. And guess what? The juror is here with us. Okay, and one of the and one of the sh the exhibitors, uh, the, the ceramicist, is also here. Let me take a moment to try to introduce them, but they can also tell you more about themselves. Um, to my far left, okay, is David Kuraoka. He is the juror of this show, which meant that he looked at all the 400 pieces that were submitted to the ceramic show and and found 90 uh, worthwhile. And uh, in the show, the show is fabulous, by the way. Did I mention that? Um, this is really professional, global quality stuff. Great. And um, he is um, uh, just finishing up as professor uh, of ceramics at San Francisco State University. He's been there since uh, 1972. Uh, that's 45 years. Let me see if I got the math right. 45 years. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> How did you do that? You only look 35. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's moving back to his, uh, you know, he's moving back home because he's a local boy. And he's uh, moving back to uh, Kauai in Hanalei there, in Haina, Hanalei, and where he's putting his new studio. And uh, I'll let him tell more about himself, okay, David? What did I miss there just now? I uh, pretty much got everything. I've, uh, it took me 40 years to figure out how to move back to Kauai. It's not, there's not, there's not many <laughs> jobs there, and, and so I had to finish out my term in, at, at, in San Francisco to come back. We actually live on Kauai. We have lived on Kauai four or five months every year. Uh -huh. So we... we I considered myself commuting to San Francisco to work <laughs> from Kauai, you know, but so we, we've kept our relationships there, kept our friends, you know, so we, you cannot just go back to the jungles and retire. You have to have a, <laughs> right, you have right, to have right. a, a basis. And Kauai has a long memory too. My wife yeah. is from Kauai. She's from Kaloa. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes. I knew we had something in common. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> That's Sanford Murata. He's the director of Think Tech and he was exhibiting two pieces in this show, and that means that David uh, selected two of his pieces, and it's an interesting story. But let me tell you that Sanford is a is a real estate consultant. Uh, he's a calligrapher. We saw his calligraphy what about a year ago? About a year ago, yes. Uh, and and now just last night we saw his uh, ceramics, two winning pieces in the show. So um, can you describe the pieces that that David selected? Yes, there are two chowan, or tea bowls, Japanese ceremony tea bowls, and, uh, which is what I'm doing mostly. I started uh, re, uh, doing pottery again nine years ago, and almost from day one, I've been doing chowans, or tea bowls. And David, I was lucky enough uh, to, for David to select two of my chowan. One is sort of uh, traditional and raku fart, and the other one is more contemporary with a lot of color in, in the glazing. They're here. No, they're in the show. Not here. They're in the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're in the show. People are watching them walking around right now. And uh, now the, uh, the ones in the show, they're, they, they're connected, right? It's called day and night. One is day, one is night. Can you distinguish between right. the two? Right. Uh, what I intended to convey was the fact that there was this um, sort of range of tea bowls through its history and its development. So the, 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 the day, which is a tea bowl that was raku fired, is basically black, just one color, which is the way the early tea bowls were. They were either black or red, depending on the color of the clay, and then white became another color, eventually another glaze a long time after. So historically, the black precedes Black or red. White. Black or red. And so I, I try to use that to uh, illustrate the fact that that is a traditional tea bowl in form and, and, and finish. And the other one, which uh, I call uh, day, is a lighter, white, contemporary, more free form. And that was to try to say, well, OK, we started with the night, the traditional and the black. And then on the other side, we have the day, which is the light, white, and more carefree. Yeah, and indeed on the other side. It was the other side of the uh, The other side the of the exhibit. room, yes, the right. Um, so, uh, David, you did not know that these two pieces were actually night and day connected. Uh, eh? No, I did not. I, I, I was. Uh, I didn't have the names, or I didn't have the titles of the pieces. Uh, and sometimes I wondered if, uh, uh, if I had the titles, I, I might have thought differently. Sometimes I wonder about that. You know. <laughs> uh, but but um, no, I didn't. Uh, I I just picked from form. I didn't. I did not pick from 
tradition or the importance of tradition at all. I, I come, I approach it from an American contemporary artist. I, uh -huh. I, I, I approach it from, from just form, uh, visual form. Um, I know, I, I know it's subjective, but, but I, I have uh, been in the field for almost, almost fifty years, including going to school. So, I trust my instincts. I trust. Where did you go to school? Um, I went to San Jose State University. Ah. Is that what you asked? Went yeah, to school? yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, I had a prolonged program, but, but then I got out with my master's, and, I, uh, and later I had extra units, and they, the San Francisco State awarded me a, a, a doctorate. Oh, so, oh very uh, nice. It's very unusual for a ceramic person. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what, what was it about Sanford's pieces that appealed to you? Um, again, it was just, I, I picked all the bowls. I mean, I, I, I mean there was a, set, a time when I went back and picked bowls out because because I, I thought uh, the ex ex exhibition also should have um, some of the uh, some small uh, uh, delicate um, um, you know exacting exacting thing you know uh, items like this. In other words, uh, the, the larger ones were easier to see, and so you, it was easier to grab all the large stuff. But then coming back, then I had to go back and re um, um, re refocus and look yeah. at look at the Make smaller things. Make comparison so that, and contrast. Yeah, because there was, the, you know, the, the, the beauty, is, uh, you have to look at it, you know, before, because the big ones kind of stick you in the eye, and then yeah, the yeah. smaller ones you have to pay So did you, did you decide to limit yourself to the, the 90 pieces, or was that just the number of pieces that appealed to you? Yes, I, I was going to actually, in my mind, mathematically, I was going to take less. Ah, mm -hmm. but you were uh, irresistibly uh, uh, drawn to ninety. Eh? Uh, well, th that's what uh, that's what was. I I felt that particular day that that was the best. Yeah. I asked that I could spend you know sleep sleep over you know, spend you know, sleep and think about it because I know the next day I might feel differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But but there was you know they were the schedule was pretty tight. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. I just flew in from uh, on Kauai from Kauai on Tuesday, jewelry and then, and then left. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's it like being a, a juror this sort of thing? I mean, you know, you, you have to be in sort of in touch with your own artistic sensibility. A lot of this is like intuition based on 50 years of experience. Yeah. Yes. And you know what you like, but sometimes it's hard to say exactly why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of, uh, for me, it's just work, you know. Um, and sometimes they would go, oh, you're lucky you're doing, you're doing ceramic, the romance of ceramic. For me, it's the burden of the process. I mean, <laughs> it's because it cracked. And, you know, as soon as I think it's good, it, it, it's screwing up. It's cracking, and, you know, mm. and I have to redo it, rethink it. And um, I'm, not, I'm not that technical. It's not, that's kind of, it's not how I, I, I lead myself. Mm. Again, it's more emotional than uh, intuition. Yeah. And then the technical stuff followed, but I have to pay attention to the technical to make sure. it succeed. Yeah. You know? So switching it around a little bit, because I'm sure you also do your own ceramics, yeah? Yes, yes. Um, what is the creative process like? See if yours and San Francisco are the same. What is it like to create a piece of ceramics? What are you thinking of when you do it? What's in your mind at the time you design and you, and you build? Well, you know, again, it's, it's so many, you know, it, it varies so much. But uh, myself, I, I was on the wheel a lot, and so a lot of my forms are wheel-based. I, I re very much enjoy the porter's wheel. Um, and as and in America, I mean, generally speaking, um, the Potter's Wheel is more important on the eastern part of America or middle America. Ah, interesting. And 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 um, in California, is a lot of hand building, yeah. figurative, um, um, narrative statement. So it's not wheel throwing is not really. Oh. Uh, Maybe it's because the, the East Coast is more industrialized. Um, no, the East, like the East Coast is, is like the, the <laughs> East and the West is more. Uh, oh well, the, the east and the Midwest is more more pottery oriented. oriented you know, they make uh, more tableware. Uh, yeah. They um, and the grad schools they celebrate making cups and they yeah. and they really study cups. And, and my school never studied cups. Hmm. We, we yeah. studied sculpture. We studied yeah. uh, form and space. More um, artistic. Yeah, yeah. artistic. Mm -hmm. and they, yeah. They, it's not necessarily better. It's just how you know, it's just how it is. I notice. <laughs> you know, just, um, yeah, sure. And, you know, because I have to buy, if I want it, we, if Carol and I want cups, we have to go to the Midwest almost, you know, where people really like cups. And then mm. it's That's easy. really cute, actually. Then, you know, okay, yeah. So, Sanford, what was in your mind when you made these pieces? I, let me say that one of them, the, the dark one, yes, is, yes. It is um, it, it's like velvet. Mm. You know, it's got a, such a deep, deep color, deep dark, mm -hmm. uh, that you, know, you, you feel it might even be soft if you touched it. Right, um, right, right. And it's um, very unusual, actually, in terms of the texture and the way it presents. Mm -hmm. And the other one is sort of like that piece over there. Right, right. Uh, which got color Thin. and mm -hmm. light and uh, 
uh, sort of a very high creative aspect to it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it's, it's sort of a graphical type, uh, more than more than the simple sure, dark one. Sure. What was in your mind when you put these together? Well, the, the, for me, the beauty of pottery is to not have anything in your mind, because so much of what is created is serendipitous. It, there are so many variables that come into play over which one has very little control. It could be uh, the type of clay and how it reacts to the glaze, how the glaze reacts to the heat in the kiln, how other pieces in the kiln will affect your piece. All of those, there is some perhaps idea of what to expect, but uh, it's, for me, it's almost always a surprise. So for the first one, what a great thing. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's, the idea for me, uh, wh why I do pottery is, is uh, sort of an escape. And the way for me to escape is to not think. And it's sort of a, an extension of my Zen training where you, uh, you know, the, the idea today is mindfulness. Well, in order, in order to be mindful, you have to reach mindlessness, which in Japanese Zen training is mushin, without mind. And consequently, the value for me in doing pottery and in shoto, calligraphy, is to not think. It's very hard to do because unless you are technically skilled, uh, you still have to do some thinking about how you're going to create whatever it is that you want to create. So for the Raku piece, uh, in terms of, I had a, a basic shape, which is very traditional. And in the firing, Raku, Raku has this uh, real, uh, uh, charm in that it can go from almost this to that. I mean, the range of the result for a novices like me is is wide. So, but but I wanted to do a dark piece, and so that's what it's a black piece. The other piece, which is I call day because it's light and more maybe frivolous. I was inspired because when I was in Japan a few years ago, I went to the Sagawa Art Museum. Is that in Tokyo? In, in uh, Kyoto, outside of Kyoto. Oh, of course. Outside. All art in Japan is in outside Kyoto, Kyoto, right? Yeah. And I was in Street, I remember. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so I, uh, the uh, Sagawa Art Museum has uh, Raku uh, uh, Pavilion, uh, Raku 15, and his pieces were made in France a few years ago. And they had a lot of color which is really exciting for me to see this kind of color in a Raku piece. So I attempted to be inspired by it and sort of copy it, well knowing that it was a very uh, low-level copy, but nevertheless, that was the inspiration. <laughs> that doesn't bother you, does uh -huh. it, David? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, well, one thing that uh, uh, these show is a variety of um, um, ceramics in Hawaii, because these are, a lot of these are different kinds of firing, high temperature, lower temperature, Raku is very low, uh, different glazing techniques. So these kind of reflect a lot of the work in the show um, because Hawaii is more, has, uh, um, has all this knowledge now. It's not, uh, um, um, you know, it, it took a while. It, it took a, a generation to get, yeah. to get comfortable. Uh, and, and I like what they said about the, the changes or the unpredictability because these come from the earth. The clay comes from the earth. When you dig in the mine, it's different here than it, then it, as the machine moves around the hole, it, the dirt's different. The chemical's different. The glazing, the, the glazing is always different from bag to bag because the machine digs this part of the, of the mountain, then this, you know, so each bag's slightly different. And you, you make a formula now, five years to make the same formula, the materials are different a little bit, you know, it's just, so it changes, uh, uh, be, just because everything's always it's from the earth, and yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely dug so, up. You know, ceramics kind of not made. <clears throat> from the earth, from the many earth. variables, many changing variables, mm -hmm. and with all of that, always a surprise in Let's the go. end. See, I learned. So we're going to take one minute break. We're going to come back. I'm going to talk about these pieces you have on the table. We're going to talk about the show and the quality of the show. We're going to talk about ceramics in Hawaii right now going forward. I'm so excited I can hardly wait. But for the moment, we're going to take this very short break. We're back. We're live. We're here with uh, David Kuraoka, the juror uh, at the Ceramic Show in Hawaii, um, and Sanford Murata, who was a mm, contender, uh, a submitter person, and a winning 
um, a winning uh, ceramic artist here for this show that ha is happening right now. It's happening, and it'll be happening until uh, January 8th, so sure. everybody can get a chance to see it. Yes. So what have we got here on the table? You guys were kind enough to bring a big box full of ceramics. Some of them are absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, most of them are, for me. Uh, can you tell me what's happening with these? Uh, why are they so beautiful? Why? How can they be like this? Well, they're all Chowan. And what I brought was a sample of the pieces that I've made for the last nine years. And I, I, I just chose things that were different from each other so that you see kind of a range in shape, in glaze, in uh, discipline, in um, sort of color. And for me, each Chowan uh, has a personality. Some not bad, some bad. <laughs> so the ones that I really don't, don't think too much about, I, um, I break up and throw in my garden. Yeah, the rest I either give away, some I've sold, and some I've kept. So I've probably made, I'm guessing, around 800 or so, maybe. Wow. Chowan. Prolific. And, and so I have now maybe a couple hundred left, and, and I keep giving them away. I got one today, actually. Yes, thank, yes you do. Keep it and treasure it, yeah. Thank and you I, for the young. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and I, I, I sort of keep a, 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 a range of my chowan so that I can look back and see how I develop sort of a more kind of a retrospective and historic development of, of my, my skill and my... my um, Crea crea uh, creativity process. Uh, you don't use a wheel. This is all. No, hand, no. This all, is all, all, all in a wheel. All, all, all in a wheel. wheel. It's all, all, all the thrown. Wheel. All, all thrown. Okay. Uh, some are a little bit more, uh, altered more than the others. Uh, this one, for instance, is way more altered than the others. The others are really straightforward. Mm -hmm. And uh, tea bowls have uh, a number of styles, different styles, traditional styles. And I, I kind of focus on uh, the uh, what's called wangata. The wangata shape comes from the traditional Buddhist monks' begging bowl, the wood bowl that uh, Buddhist monks use to uh, receive mainly food because monks, Buddhist monks, were not allowed to have any possessions. So the wangata is probably the more popular tea bowl shape, and that's that almost comes naturally to me when I'm throwing. I, uh, I just kind of let my hands uh, sort of direct the shape, and of course the clay, you have to kind of be mindful of where the clay wants to go. Do you watch your hands? Do you watch the, the wheel while it happens, or do you sometimes you know, transport yourself away? No, uh, I pretty much am looking at uh, what's happening with the clay. You know, as, my, as my hands lift the clay up and shape it, it it's uh, I just kind of let, let the clay more or less uh, dictate the form that it's finally going to be in. But, but Chowan tea bowls are traditionally three inches high, five inches wide. That's more or less, if there's a standard, that's sort of the standard. And, you've, and so I fall into that. I'm doing bigger bowls nowadays just because I want to kind of break out from the traditional size. This would be a more traditional size, and this would be a bigger size. This is a Raku fired. And so, uh, basically, what it, what this shows is a, a sample of my work. I, I'm a novice, so I'm just beginning to uh, to learn about clay and and Chowan. The there's uh, the thought of wabi sabi. Wabi sabi is this idea of expressing rusticness, naturalness, imperfection, something that's unfinished. It's very well um, admired in Japanese art, particularly uh, tea bowls. And I'm searching for what that means. And I think the only way you can find it is just to do thousands of something. And let the cl a clay find a way. Uh, and this is the thousands of something I'm doing. I'm doing tea bowls. <laughs> so are those three over there look like they're the classic tea, uh, tea bowls uh, because they, they're all similar, at least in shape, not necessarily in texture. Um, and this, this is... This is when you have these little cracks, that's the raku, is that what it is? That's white crackle, white crackle glaze in raku, and, and David knows all about that. He's, he's a master at his uh, crackle finishes, so 
Um, in fact, I made that, I believe, when David was a juror for Rakuho Laulea. And uh, in fact, he chose this one to appear in the, uh, as a contemporary t mm -hmm. maybe seven years ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please, uh, one thing about our, our yeah. ceramic that, that um, someone, let me do pen, please. Sure. The, the very high temperature ones are, 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 are pretty much turned to glass. You know, and so I, I think it's interesting for your viewers. These are high temperature, high temperature. Whereas the Rakubos are, are much more subtle, I think, and I think he appreciates the subtlety. Ah, okay. you could tell the sound from looking at it. Huh? That's correct. I mean, and, and, and but by the temperature that he's, you know, there's, it's almost like. <laughs> <laughs> they can make music. <laughs> I just I thought that was now interesting. What about that one at the, the far in the far row there? Yeah, that has a gold and blue design. That is really beautiful. That was really interesting to me. Uh, what happened was, and, and this is a, a sort of the the charm of the of the unknown. So this is one glaze. It's called uh, UH blue. And Did you say UH. UH. Like UH. University of Hawaii. Well, I don't know where where, where yeah, is you is that where it comes from? Yeah. UH, UH blue. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the charm of this piece for me is because we have this, uh, this breaking, breaking up of the glaze. And you almost cannot plan that. At least I don't know how to plan it. It's just the, uh, the luck of the firing. And uh, I, I like that. I like to see my glazes to, be, uh, to have a certain dynamic quality. And this has. This has that quality where it's breaking up and it's sort of doing something that you don't control and don't, uh, it's hard to, hard it's to. It's really uh, beautiful. It almost looks like it's to carved. Make. Yeah, that, that's, you know, that, to me what I like to see is a, a dynamic quality to the pieces, whether it's in the shape or in the finish in the glaze. In fact, David and I were having a conversation about this just last night in that ceramics is a very interesting art form because you have the, the shape itself, which is a structure. And then you have the glaze or the finish, which is the decorative aspect. And so often you can have a shape that's beautiful, but if the finish or the surface does not, is not consistent with that shape, it fails. People will not like it. But you could take a, a, a shape or form that's very simple or even inelegant and give it a great glaze or a great finish or a great decorative aspect, and it could be very successful. That's very interesting. interesting. So you have to put both the, the structure and the finish together to be successful. Mm -hmm. And, and then Dave, what David was talking about in the show was the discipline and the self-confidence. And you have to have a certain confidence to make the piece and glaze the piece and fire the piece so that you have something that is admirable. How do I achieve that, David? Is there a pill I can take? <laughs> I guess practice. Huh? <laughs> numbers. I believe in numbers. Yeah. Um, it, it can, I, I don't know what else beats it. Yeah. That when you self, you'll self-teach yourself after a while, but you have, to make, you have to do so many to find a mistake, to learn to the next mistake. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Whenever it's good, you're not, you're not growing because you're just happy. Right. You, know? you finally come to the mistake, then there's a little growth, right? You go, oh yeah, I was really fine. And then you, you, then you see better the next time. Yeah. You know, and, and I have a hard question for you, David. Which is one your favorite over here? I don't have a doubt. Notice the hesitation on that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh, thank I, you, like, thank I, you. I, I like, um, um, it, it, this glaze on the top is the same glaze here. That's too thick. That's this right. One's just that right. is the same. Yep. And so I can see the, the activity of the, of the root of the, I can fall back into my technicality, you know, technicality. <laughs> so I, I see things a little different. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, I think the glazes flow very well amongst amongst the manganese, the copper, and the, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking like that. But but I'm uh, but I also because I'm thinking color and, and the chemicals mm -hmm. that iron oxide, uh, uh, metallic oxide that produce these mm -hmm. these reactions. I know it's high temperature, and um, and I I, just, I I like the green. I think it's pleasant. Uh, Okay, well, since you were so quick on that one, let me ask you a second question. Okay. <laughs> What's your second choice oh. here? <laughs> <laughs> I was really admiring that. Oh, you. <laughs> and I also like the lip. I think this is the most sophisticated. I wondered if this was the last one you made. 
No, no, this, no. I, this, is, this is one of the earlier <laughs> ones, maybe <laughs> several years ago, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that... Uh, um, Which is interesting, because some of the earlier pieces, I feel, are more successful than the, more, than the recent pieces. Um, yeah, just I, I think it grows. Worked. I think you have to look back you know, with an yeah. open mind, right? And then, like, like yeah. you said, you're keeping a lot. Yeah. I'll, I'll go back to the throwing. When I throw, I throw, and I teach throwing, you throw from the inside. Mm. The inside form is important because the outside can always match. You can trim the outside. But when the inside's wrong, then the outside's going to be wrong. Or right. not yeah, going to yeah, be right. Yeah, yeah, be yeah. thick on the bottom and crack. Yeah. So, to, so, so I focus them on the inside. It's really hard. With a bowl, you never look on the outside. You only look on the inside, the right. beauty of the inside. Because the outside's going to be ugly. If the outside's... When you finish the bowl, if it looks good, something's wrong. Mm. <laughs> this means the inside's wrong. You know, something's wrong. The, right. the inside, if you make the inside really good, the outside's really funny because it's, it's holding up the inside. And then it'll get leather hard, come back and fix the outside. You know, just a hint for the day. So how about you, Sanford? What do you like? What's your favorite one in this crowd? Wow, and if your favorite one is wow. the same one that David yeah. picked, then what is your second favorite one? <laughs> now, I'm not, I can't really say I have a favorite. They're all doing different things. Um, perhaps one that I like a lot because it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm attempting to go into a little di different direction with altering the, the form and attempting to be much more freer uh, rather than something that's really clean. This is, a, I think, a very clean shape. This is freer, and I actually kind of pushed it around when I was making it. And as I glazed it, I was uh, not all that fussy about the glaze itself. I just let, kind of let it happen. This is chino, which is a traditional uh, glaze. Uh, basically, chino started as a white glaze from Japan. And as you can see, the foot is rather freely carved. You know, it's not on the wheel. I just carved it. So I'm trying to break out from the, the, the more simpler form, the more straightforward form. But it's very difficult because uh, what I've learned is in order to be uh, skilled with this, what I would call the wabi-sabi approach, you have to be technically very proficient. And so what, I've, what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going backwards. This, these two were attempted to be more um, kind of free form, more natural, more rustic. More old. I like that. Purposely, one a lot. I I was what I was doing with glazing this was finding a way to make the piece look old, and I think I'm successful with that. But then what I'm learn what I've learned what I'm learning today, in order for me to get better at altering the piece and getting more, uh, how should I say, artistic with the form, is I have to go back and get better with my skill. So I'm going backwards and starting all over again. I'm just throwing cylinders and trying to make real clean cylinders, very consistent. And from then, I think after I get to a comfort level beyond where I am now, I can kind of break it up again, you know, break, break up the piece. Is this a good approach? Um, <laughs> whatever, whatever works. <laughs> I don't, I, Bowls are not cylinders, you know, I mean, they're kind of different. I mean, uh, cylinders are bottles and stuff, so it's a little different approach to throwing. But whatever works, I, mean, I, I agree with you, these are very handsome, too. They're very much more personal, almost hand-built, right? Yes, Feels yes, very almost nice hand-built. Nice in your hand. And so you kind of, I guess you got brave after you did these, and blah, 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 but you're moving right, in that yeah, direction. Right, yeah, these, these are later ones, these are earlier ones, yeah. I can see that. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you've seen pottery everywhere, you've seen ceramics for 50 years. I like your opinion about this show in general, the 90 pieces, and for that matter, the 400 that were submitted to you. Well, especially the 90, where, you know, there was, within that, um, there was some really nice work, and they were, uh, the State Foundation came, bought three, and, but um, I, you know, like, Esther Shimazu is, like, I see her work on the mainland, you know, I, I see her, um, she's very active on, out there in the mainland. Um, uh, I'll go her. There was another one that was quite active on the mainland, I forget her name, I'm sorry. But but um, um, a lot of you know some someone goes um, like I, I I tell the some people well why don't you go to school more and they go um, well because you know well I don't know if that helps or somebody who went to school I said but the the time you you put while you were going to school you know that that that, that time really helped their your work and then graduate school takes another three intense year really years it really helps your work 
So it's just it's not the school so much as it focuses you in in on work for years, and then when mm -hmm. you come out, you you will hit because yeah. Yeah. because of that um, um, schedule and because that period of time you devoted to the to, mm -hmm. to the work. Um, so I, I think that you know education is important, you know, um, and I, and 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 it shows a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the work shows that education. Too. So, what do you think of uh, Hawaii as a place which has people, has potters like this? I mean, are we um, special? Um, yes, yes, and no. It depends on the individual. A, a lot of um, a lot of the information here, besides formally from the university, was brought in. These uh, Hawaii craftsmen, University of Hawaii, they, they bring in uh, lecturers and they bring in uh, outside outside influences. And that really helps helps the place because it's not because it's we're isolated, right? And we have to bring uh, bring people in to mm -hmm. to um, keep it moving forward. So, right. Sanford, now that you have two pieces uh, exhibited, uh, your 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 value as as a ceramicist is way high. For example, now you know uh, you could sell your pieces uh, for a fortune. Uh, and have you sold anything lately? I'm uh, not so much uh, uh, sort of thinking about selling my pieces. If I, I, I give them away mainly, if, uh, and, and I found a great way to gift my bowls. The Pacific Buddhist Academy has a annual fundraiser, and at the fundraiser they have a uh, silent auction. So I feel it's a great way for me to give my pieces to uh, an organization that I admire, and it's being bought for somebody who would like to have my, my piece. So it's, it's a win-win, and I'm giving, giving it away, and yet somebody's buying it and helping an organization succeed. So it's a labor of love, <laughs> and the other is you can learn by looking at your work. Always, after, yeah, always, yeah. constantly. In fact, constantly. there are times when, when the bowl comes out of the kiln and I look at it and I say, oh, not so good. And then I, maybe I take it home and I leave it on my shelf and I look at it again, oh, not too bad. <laughs> and after a while I think, oh, pretty good, you know. It's, it's, you're right, you learn, yeah. you learn from it. But the, for me, the, the value of what I do, the pottery, is a process. You know, you're sort of getting lost in what, what you do. And I'm not too uh, sort of concerned with the end result. It, it is what it is. It's fine. I admire some of my work. And I enjoy looking at it. But uh, I, I kind of sort of put it aside and go and, on. And that's know? the overarching point of our discussion. It's the process. It's the process, yeah. It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Right. right. It's a lot of process, yeah. Thank you, Sanford Barada. Thank you. Thank you, David Kuroka. It's Thank been you. great to learn about ceramics <laughs> and the ceramic show through you. Aloha. Aloha. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs>